Hi, my name is Mark Andre, and I'm going to do a brief rundown on what you need to know about me. the crashing patient with acute right ventricular failure in the emergency department. It's hard to do a talk on the RV without talking a little bit about physiology. The RV is a thin-walled structure that's part of a low-pressure system built for compliance. But unlike the LV, it deals with pressure really poorly. And so when it sees any increase in afterload, it dilates. But the RV and the LV share the fixed volume of the pericardium. And so when the RV dilates, it pushes the septum into space that's owned by the LV. And when the LV gets compressed to the point of being underfilled, systemic cardiac output falls. And when systemic cardiac output falls, that ends up be becoming a problem for the right ventricle. Because the RV is perfused from the systemic circulation. And so when systemic cardiac output falls, the RV becomes ischemic, its contractility falls, it stops moving blood over the left side of the heart, and this is the death spiral of right ventricular failure that you're trying to keep your patient out of. And so you get this patient, a 62-year-old woman. She's hypoxic, tachycardic, hypotensive. You put a probe on the chest, and this is what you see. And your first question has to be, is this massive right ventricle old, or is it new? Because if it's new, then this is a massive P until proven otherwise. And your management is going to be focused on addressing that clot. And that's going to depend on the clinical circumstance and the resources that are available to you at your center. But the other scenario, and the one that I'm going to focus on, is the patient with known pulmonary vascular disease, established RV dysfunction, who gets sick and goes on to hemodynamically decompensate. That patient's RV failure then enters the forefront of their management. And so these patients are scary. And they're, um, sorry, they're scary. And, uh, and there's, a, there's just four tenets of resuscitating the failing RV. You want to avoid volume overload, avoid systemic hypotension, manage RV afterload, and in these patients, avoid intubation. So blanket statements are dangerous in RV failure. But in general, you want to be cautious with fluids. Giving volume to an already overloaded right ventricle can make the situation worse. So think about giving small 250 or 500 cc boluses and assessing for a response. Next, you want to avoid systemic hypotension. Hypotension promotes RV ischemia and tips off the cycle of failure. And because of the problem giving volume to these patients, have a low threshold to start vasopressors early in their management. Phenylephrine is the wrong choice in RV failure. It's a non-selective vasoconstrictor and acts on the pulmonary vasculature and increases RV afterload. Norepi and epi are both reasonable options, and vasopressin is a, is a vasoconstrictor that spares the pulmonary vasculature and is an interesting option if you're comfortable with this agent. When things aren't going well, the inotropes can help you augment RV contractility. Dobutamine and milirinone are both well studied in this context. It is really dealer's choice. Just remember that both of these agents can promote hypotension and often require a second agent to be on board at the same time. As best you can, you want to manage RV afterload. Hypoxia promotes pulmonary vasoconstriction and increases RV afterload. So supplement oxygen liberally to these patients. And if you have a patient on a vent, think about using nitric oxide, an inhaled pulmonary vasodilator. If you have a patient who's got pulmonary arterial hypertension and lives on a prostacyclin infusion for pulmonary vasodilation, you've got to keep that infusion going. Abruptly discontinuing that infusion can lead to a reflex pulmonary vasoconstriction and hemodynamic collapse. Balto was the hero dog who, against all odds, brought medications to a remote Alaskan village who desperately needed them. If you've got a patient who's on a remodulin infusion and your pharmacy doesn't stock remodulin, you've got to find your Balto and you've got to get your patient remodulin. Next, you want to avoid intubating these patients, if at all possible. They don't tolerate the increase in RV afterload that comes with positive pressure ventilation, and they don't tolerate the hypotension that comes with most of the induction agents we use. But if you're stuck intubating one of these patients, and if time allows, think about putting an arterial line in prior to induction, because that's going to allow you to capture the moment-to-moment -moment swings in hemodynamics that you're going to need to respond to immediately. And last, if your conventional strategies are failing and your patient continues to crash, extracorporeal hemodynamic support can act as salvage therapy. And so if you're taking care of a patient with right ventricular failure, think about transferring them to an ECMO center early in their management. In sum, when you put the probe on the chest and you see this image, remember there are two ventricles there. Respect the right ventricle. And if you see this and you've identified right ventricular failure, remember there's just four tenets of resuscitating that RV. You want to avoid volume overload, avoid hypotension, as best you can manage afterload, and, uh, and avoid innovating these patients. These are my references. Thank you, everyone.